What's up guys, Will Gibbons here, and today we're gonna talk about computers. So you need a new computer for 3D modeling and rendering, but you don't know what to buy. There's a million options out there. Do you go with a Mac? Do you go with a PC? This laptop versus that laptop? CPU versus GPU rendering? There's just too many things to consider. So I've decided to make a short video series in which I break down how you can go sift through all this information, make sure you spend your money where it needs to go for you to get the best computer for your specific needs possible. So without further ado, we're gonna answer the question, what computer should you buy next? Let's dive in. This is gonna be the first video in a three-part video series, and I'm going to discuss in this video the three approaches you should consider when going out and buying your next computer. Now the next video that will follow this one, we're gonna get into hardware and software and specific configurations and how to actually put your money into a system that's gonna serve you the best. And the last video is gonna be all about my new system and how I went about ordering something that would best suit my needs and what I think about it and whether or not I recommend it for you guys. All right, so let's get into something I'm calling the three approaches to buying a new computer. Approach number one is going to be retail. And this is where you're going to go into any sort of big box technology store or some sort of online retailer, call it Best Buy or something similar. And you're gonna find pre-configured systems, whether they're by recognizable brands like Dell or HP or Lenovo or Apple, something like that. These are gonna be computers that are configured to appeal to as many people as possible. So they're not going to be very purpose-built but they are going to be some of the more affordable options. Again, they're going to be trying to sell as many of these computers as possible, and to do that, they're going to have fairly generic configurations. So let's look at some pros and cons. Going with retail, you're going to spend the least amount of money possible. They're working with volume. They're gonna be selling so many of these computers that they are going to be very competitive with their pricing. So if you're on an extreme budget or you're a hobbyist, then this is gonna be a great option for you. The other benefit is that you're going to get whatever warranty comes with the product. So if there's an issue, you can always take it back and get it resolved. So option number two is going to be the DIY build. This typically appeals to the gamers, the tinkers, the hands-on technophiles, basically anyone who wants to really go and build something and really tweak and customize every aspect of it. Some of the pros are that if you have a very unique set of circumstances or you need a really unique hardware configuration that you may not be able to find anywhere else, this could be the option for you. Also, if you're trying to maximize your savings, you could go this route, but we're gonna come back to that later because I don't personally think a DIY build is always gonna be the cheapest option. With a DIY build, you're gonna go out, do all the research, find all the components, buy them separately, assemble them on your own, and then make sure that you keep your computer up and running. Another thing to consider is that if you are building this on your own, then you're responsible for the whole system working. While each individual component may still have a warranty, the uh, the entire system as a whole does not come with any sort of warranty. There's no one who can um, typically come in and work on that for you should something go wrong. And option number three, I'm calling the custom route. This is where you're gonna go to a computer company that actually creates custom built computers for its customers. So they're gonna to listen to things like the reasons you're going to need the computer, how you're gonna use it, the software you use, and then they're going to make something tailor-made for you. Now, how much time and attention and care they put into it is going to vary from company to company, but some of the main benefits of going with a custom-built route is that it is up to this company to deliver a product that works to you. So should something go wrong, uh, they're gonna offer things like warranties and, and liability for your computer's performance. The other thing is that if you're not somebody who has a lot of time to build something on your own or do the research, um, they're the experts. They're gonna do all this for you and all you have to do is basically specify your needs and then you get a t uh, tailor-made machine that's gonna help support your workflow. So the only con that jumps out to me when it comes to going with a custom-built computer is that you will pay a little bit more for their services and their expertise. However, I do wanna talk about budget in just a minute here. All right, now that we've covered the three main categories, we've got the retail option, the DIY option, the custom option, take a moment to comment down below 
which one of these categories do you think you fit in most closely today? So recently, when I found myself needing a new computer myself, I decided to go with option number three, the custom route. Now, I wanna explain why really quickly. So I've been using a DIY machine that I built myself about three years ago, and it's worked on and off. Sometimes it's been good, sometimes it's not been so good. And once I got it built and I started freelancing, I was pretty happy with its performance. But after a while, I started getting blue screens and freezes and crashes and other things that I couldn't quite find the reason behind. There were times when I had to actually turn down freelance jobs because my computer wasn't working properly or I had it in getting diagnosed by the shop. I also was swapping out components to see if that would make it better. And I even had some jobs where my computer kept crashing and I actually was afraid that I was going to have to tell the client that I couldn't complete the job. So when you add up the extra cost, stress, and downtime associated with my DIY build not functioning properly, it turns out in the end it was a more expensive option and more hassle than just going with the custom built option, which is why I decided this time around to go that route. So after I chose to go with the custom built computer route myself, I started doing my research. And there's a ton of options I could have gone with, but ultimately I decided to go with a company out of Seattle called Puget Systems. And the reason I went with them has more to do with the personal attention I got as a customer compared to a lot of these other companies that are somewhat faceless. So when I started looking around on Puget's website, the first thing I noticed is that on their about page, it literally has a picture of all their employees' faces and even talks about their backgrounds and why they're qualified to do what they do. The other interesting thing is uh, Puget, you probably haven't heard of them, and that's because they don't spend a lot of money advertising. They choose to spend the resources improving their business and giving their customers the best experience possible while saving a little bit of money as well. They do all sorts of custom benchmarking and testing. And when I actually called them the first time, um, I got one of their uh, sales guys and he walked me through the process. He took notes on what type of software I use. And then he came back with some recommendations. So they won my trust really early on. After looking around online and seeing interviews with uh, the guy who started the company and seeing some actual tours of their facility and just understanding that the people who work there are truly passionate about what they do and that they offer really great customer support, I decided ultimately that they were the best company for someone like me who's a freelancer or a professional who has a good bit of experience with what I do but also wants a computer that performs and doesn't want to take on the risk of building it themselves and then potentially having the liability of a computer that isn't 100% trustworthy. So when I told Puget Systems that I wanted to make a series of videos documenting the process of me getting a new computer and also sharing with you guys kind of how I go about making decisions, what components to prioritize, and even um, my experiences with Puget Systems, they were way into the idea. They were kind enough to give me my new computer free of charge, as long as I would share my honest opinions um, and experiences with you guys. So thanks to them, we get to learn about computers. Now the new machine that I got from Puget Systems is a beast. I'm not gonna go through all the specs quite yet, but I will at least mention that it's powered by the new AMD Ryzen Threadripper Gen 3 CPU, and that thing is fast. In the next video, we're actually gonna get into all the specific hardware and software and how they work together. And that's where we're really going to learn how you can prioritize certain components to make sure that you're getting the best computer for your money, regardless of whether you're in category number one, retail, category number two, DIY, or category number three, the custom built route. Next video, we're gonna explain, again, how to make those decisions, how to narrow it down, how to know exactly what to buy for your needs. And then I'll be following that up with another video about my new computer that I got from Puget Systems. I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna talk about why we put what we did in it and how it's going to help support my workflow instead of becoming a bottleneck like my current machine has done. So look forward to that as well. In the meantime, you might find some of the videos in the playlist on screen helpful. And until next time, happy rendering.